Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Masters 25 and give you an honest take of why I believe it failed and why it failed to me. Now, Masters 25 was a set that supposedly celebrated 25 years of a card game. That's pretty impressive for any company, any business, no matter what it is to last 25 years and to be doing very well. A lot of times I'm very critical of them, but they did a good job for 25 years. Could they do a better job? Yes, I would argue that they can always improve. The reason this set failed was solely based on hype and expected value. The hype on this set was out of control. Just out of control. You had YouTubers say ridiculous things in hindsight about the set. Now, I was also very hyped about the set. And, you know, it. when you look at it, Jace is unbanned. Yeah, that's kind of cool. But what else? What else? Imagine if this set, imagine if Jace was not unbanned. He's not doing so hot in modern. Good, I, I've seen him in top 16 decks, but not really take down a tournament yet. So, he gets unbanned. Recruiter is supposedly this $100 plus card that is $54. Chalice is a, a $70, $80 card, which is a little cheaper now. Rasan Port is a $100 card at the time of reprinting or the, at the time of announcement, right? It's not the... The card doesn't go down in price at when people start opening boxes. It goes down as soon as the card is announced. Now, on the flip side, and this is the problem. So the problem is not Jace, Imperial Recruiter, or Chalice. The problem is the other side. And let's name the cards. And this is not all of them. There's actually more. We have a card, Biden, uh, Vasa, Degree of Justice, for probably the 18th time. Is it Chemist, Fortune Thief, Brian again, Rorik? <laughs> I mean, anything from Dragon Maze is pretty much bad. Blue Sun Zenith, Mystic Snake, Niz Mizzet, Nosen Thief. Are these cards, quote, iconic to you? Are they a good representation of Magic the Gathering's history? I would argue absolutely not. Why are they included in a set that MSRP is $10? And stores have sold for 170, 180. This is not your typical box. This is actually double. So even at the in online price, let's say online hour devastation box is $72 right now, which it is, free shipping. This is way more than 144. But are these packs twice as good as the ordinary standard box? I would argue no. I would argue these rares look like they are standard rares. And I understand there is a foil per pack, but there's also only 24 packs. Right? So it's $180 for 24 packs versus $180 for pretty much eight, two boxes of anything in standard right now. The problem is amplified when you look at the Mythics. Like, all you have to do is look at this screenshot, and it tells you all you need to know about Masters 25. My gosh, is bad. Uh, Tree Redemption, Acroma, Acroma, Armageddon, Doomsday, Gisela, Master the Hunt. So you have seven cards out of 15. There's only 15 of these that are under $4. And the middle card, the median card is 4 dollars and 21 cents and then you have a bunch of cards that just have plummeted been dealing click got just obliterated imperial recruiter it turns out that it is it was more about supply than demand and the demand was not that high chalice jace i imagine if jace was a 50 dollar card or a 60 dollar card assuming he was on he was still banned in modern. You're looking at pretty much iconic masters expected value per car. Like, it's bad. I don't think anyone's going to be happy when they pull a Doomsday or 
a Gisela even, as their mythic, like, I just opened a bunch of boxes of conspiracies, and their mythics are, like, slightly better. Median, at least. You got show and tell, you have sneak, I think sneak attack is in there. I've never pulled a sneak attack from one of my boxes yet. You have the, what's that, Leovo at $40 for a, and those packs are less than $2 a pack. So we're talking $10 MSRP and possibly local game store, $8 online, right? Or eight, yeah, probably $8, seven, 750 online versus conspiracy. So I can open four packs of conspiracy, take the crown more than four packs and do much better than opening one pack of this. It doesn't feel epic. It feels like it's not just the cards have low value, right? That's one thing. It just feels like they were lazy. I, I don't know how else to put it. What is? They're either really bad at predicting stuff, or they just made this set out of. I I get what, what many of you say. Oh, draft, draft, draft. We have to make sure it's. I think you just got to rip the band-aid off and say, hey, no, we recognize there's a secondary market and the majority of you are interested in this card because of said secondary market. I know they can never say that, but honestly, they should. You do have some lands, um, are they the most valuable lands you could reprint? I don't know. I think the enemy fetch lands would have been good again. So if you look at the difference in enemy and ally, it's just volume. And I think supply should increase anyway. I love uncommons. And I love the commons. Value in them makes me happy because you're going to see them over and over again. So in terms of take the crown conspiracy, ghostly prison, visions, what's the beast within a few dollars. Like it's not bad here. You're looking at the same scenario, but for a ten dollar pack, Street Wraith, Curse Catcher, Spirit Guide, Utopia. Oh, that one got bumped up. Aspirant, Lightning Bolt, Boris Charm. Yeah, I mean, there's better on commons, but not by much. Not by much. They, and these don't these cards don't make any sense. Like, why do we need swords or plowshares again and again and again? Like, they just pick these same cards and they just hammer them over and over again. I look at some of these cards and I ask myself, "Wow, is this really like a card that I would think of?" Oh, like if you asked an invasion, if you asked me to pick. Some card, I think exclude if I'm correct, that's from Invasion. I would be like, no, that's not iconic. That's not like a good use of an uncommon slot to celebrate Magic's 25th anniversary. Like anyone knows that, like everyone knows that. They were so worried and concerned about value that they butchered it. And here we have the commons, Relentless Rat is $1.50, which is nice. Netanel, Sentinel, Counterspells here, Brainstorm, Dark Ritual. Those are kind of iconic. Some cards I think they missed, uh, Demonic Tutor. Uh, that's a big one. That's one of the best, I mean, if not the best tutor in the game. I would also say Imperial Seal. That can single one card can single handedly save this product if they were bold enough to reprint it. That would have been Imperial Seal. Would make a lot of sense. You know, don't reprint Imperial Recruiter because you know people don't want that. Reprint the big ones. So they clearly are messing with the secondary market. And the reason that this product is so lackluster is they know you will buy it and they will continue to make. So they can't. If they put Imperial Seal in this product, they cannot put it in the next product. So they want to drain the consumer for the maximum amount of money with the minimal amount of secondary product, uh, secondary cost. And trust me, they are well aware. They've been doing these sets forever. The excuse of, oh, they didn't know Imperial Recruiter would fall so hard. Oh, there was no way for them to realize that these uncommons would tank from $10 to 
No, because that's what happened in every ma How many master sets have they made? Original Modern Masters, that's kind of an outlier, so we'll leave that alone. 2015, 2017, 2018, are we getting one that this year? I don't think so. Uh, it's like every other year. We got Eternal, Eternal again, Iconic. They know, they know, no, they know, like, you can't, maybe after one master set, they're still experimenting. But man, it's been a bunch of them already. And this one is, there's no excuse for what they did. They wanted to sell as much product with the lowest quality possible. The lowest quality in terms of reprinting. If they don't reprint Imperial Seal now or a good card now, they can always save it for later for another master set that they will make you buy. You look at this product, 95% of it is junk. We're celebrating Magic's 25th anniversary, which is amazing for a card game or for any business really, by giving the consumers junk. Think about how ridiculous that is. That this box is not even above MSRP. That the expected value in this box, even if you hit Jace, Imperial Recruiter, you're still not break even. And that's hitting two of the most expensive, two of most expensive. You hit Jace and Chalice, you're still probably not break even. That's really, really bad. Um, that's really, really bad. And even, okay, I'm just going to go out on limb. Why the blank does this have 24 packs? Like, they really couldn't throw in an extra pack because they were cheap and lazy. They didn't want to redesign the packaging. Like, they could have really done amazing on this product from simply adding another pack to it, right? Wouldn't that make sense? Anyway, bye, guys.